We're reading today from Matthew 22, where Jesus is talking with the Jewish authorities who, as either patriots or collaborators, are completely opposed to each other, but united in trying to trap Jesus in his words, as it says in verse 15. Now that has to be one of the most foolish errands you could possibly go on, trying to catch the all-wise God who actually created you in his words. Needless to say, they get a verbal and intellectual spanking, but hopefully one that cuts to the heart. And if it didn't for them, it certainly should for us. The trap that they set is a question about political allegiance. Should you pay your taxes? The Pharisees would say no. The Herodians would say yes. Jesus isn't afraid of either of them, and he's got a lesson for all of us. You don't run from your questioners when they seek to trick you. Stand your ground and question the questions. He says, show me the coin for the tax. Whose likeness is on it and whose inscription? And they tell him, Caesar. That's right. And the inscription would have read, Tiberius Caesar Augustus, son of the deified Augustus, chief priest. And he tells them to give to Caesar what's Caesar's. What does this mean? Well, he's reflecting the hypocrisy of the Pharisees right back to them. The Herodians as collaborators would be happy enough to pay their taxes, but the Pharisees would have been uncomfortable caught between their seemingly singular devotion to the God of Israel and their use of Roman roads, education, justice, freedom, all of these things which were paid for by taxes. Jesus cuts through, yes, give to Caesar what's Caesar's, but give to God what's God's. And this has at least two meanings. Firstly, there is a division being made between the matters of this age, the political, and the matters of eternity. Note, that doesn't mean that God absents himself from the political realm, and neither should his people. But it does mean there is a temporal realm and an eternal realm, and the second overlaps the first. We don't have political saviours. Ours is an eternal kingdom. And as we lead in the here and now, we do so in the fear of God, knowing that we have feet of clay. The second meaning is an undeniable knockout blow. The coin has Caesar's image on it, but whose image is on Caesar? Aha, we know. Genesis 9 tells us that God will demand an account for the destruction of human life as blasphemy because God created man in his own image. And there it is. Give Caesar the coin, but Caesar himself is owed to and owned by the God whose image he bears. It can be easy to become harassed and confused by political promises, pressures and turmoils that we all have to live with. Have you ever placed your faith in men and women to deliver politically only to be disappointed. Well, be encouraged that the king's heart is a stream of water in the hand of the Lord and he turns it wherever he wants to, as Proverbs 21.1 says. The most powerful of the earth are subject to the most high and our part as Christians is to pray continually for those in authority that they serve well under the king of kings. Have you felt a call to serve or to lead in the political sphere locally or nationally? Well, don't shy away from those sort of calls. Don't think that there's something, it's something beneath the high calling of the Christian. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. And his calls on your life are to bring about the righteous eternal kingdom in this passing age. Lord, let us be fearless in your world for your name's sake. Let us be peacemakers as far as it depends on us. But when conflict comes, let us be brave, honest and wise in the midst of a world which speaks so much death. Let us be immersed in the truth of your word so that we might speak life. Blessed be your name, Lord Jesus. Amen.